A Monday afternoon edition of the Southern 500 vlog post. It's NASCAR Fan 97 again. Um, in today's vlog, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of history on my attendings of Darlington races. That's probably the best way I could probably word it. Um, I've been going to Darlington for races since 2009 whenever the Southern 500 name first came back, but I've been only going to the Southern 500 itself since 2015 when they moved it back to Labor Day weekend. From 2009 to 2014, I was always going to the Xfinity race when I was a lot smaller. That first year I went, I don't really remember much about it, but it did pour down rain while I was getting some souvenirs. I had to go home to change before the race even started. I was soaked. Uh, but uh, Matt Kenseth ended up winning thanks to Kyle Busch's flat tire. In 2010, it was a battle between Busch and Hamlin. Hamlin ended up beating Kyle Busch in a sweep of the Darlington race weekend and his very dominant 2010 playoff run he fell just short after wrecking out at homestead that allowed jimmy to get his fifth straight then uh bush eventually got his darlington win in 2011 his originally his final year with the 18 z-line car of course that incident they had with ron hornaday at texas that year got him booted from the rest of the year in the minor series and that really set off a bad vibe for 2012. He'd only won one race through the three series, and that was the cup race at Richmond, and he ended up missing the playoffs. So it was for Jeff Gordon's benefit, though. Gordon got in, so that's good. Speaking of 2012, that was the year that uh, Joey Logano ended up winning after crashing out Elliot Sadler, that was a bit uh, crummy. It's unfortunate how Elliot Sadler's always had bad luck in his career when it comes to big races and championships and things like that. He always has the worst luck. 2013, Kyle Busch wins again. Ho-hum. Then 2014, Busch dominated. Caution comes out late. And Chase comes through his second Xfinity win in a row, then called the Nationwide Series. He won at Texas the previous week. He wins Darlington in a chaotic green-white checker finish. It was an honor for me to see that one. And until just last year, that was the last ever Xfinity race I ever went to. That obviously changed last year when I went to that one, thanks to... One of my friends giving us some tickets for that race. Um, then 2015 NASCAR and Darlington Raceway announced that the race is moving back to Labor Day weekend. First time since 2003 that's ever happened. Terry Labonte won that race. That was a pretty popular win. Excuse me. I just had Subway this afternoon for lunch. I had an Italian BMT. Man, that's delicious. Um, but, uh, yeah, 2015, it was a very, very long race due to the cautions, but Carl Edwards ends up prevailing over Brad Keselowski. 2016, Kevin Harvick dominated, but it ends up being Martin Truex taking the win. 2017, Denny Hamlin gets his second Southern 500 win. Toyotas went 3-for-3 three three in the Southern 500 on Labor Day weekend all the way up until 2018. That was the year Kyle Larson dominated the race, but Brad Keselowski ended up taking the win in his Rusty Wallace throwback scheme. And uh, that was one of the first notable throwback schemes that I recall going to victory lane. Truex's in 2016 was technically a throwback, but I didn't really count it. I don't really recall Hamlin's scheme a lot, even though he did sweep that weekend. And, of course, Carl was not running a uh, throwback scheme in 2015. But that was the first 
Manufacturer win for a manufacturer other than Toyota in the Southern 500 on Labor Day weekend. Then, of course, last year, I uploaded a lot of videos for you guys about the race weekend, which I plan to do this year as well, but uh, I'm going to have to find some different things to talk about. More than likely, there will not be a car hauler parade for you guys, mainly because of social distancing and things like that. But uh, I'll find something to talk about. Don't worry. Car hauler parade. I went to the Xfinity race on Saturday. I actually went to uh, practice on Friday as well. I did a vlog there too. Uh, Xfinity on Saturday. Hamlin originally won, but his car got disqualified. So Cole Custer won that race. And of course, Midnight Darlington. <laughs> the Southern 500 that was held up to about 11 o'clock start time. Thanks to a big monsoon <laughs> of a rainstorm. And Eric Jones ended up getting his second career cup series win, outdueling Kyle Busch at Darlington. If you can be able to outduel Kyle at a tough racetrack like Darlington, you have to have some skill. So I would imagine a lot of teams will be looking to snatch up the lead shark in free agency being Eric Jones. A lot of people think that he could be the main guy that takes over the 48s. You never know. So uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the story of every time I've went to a race at Darlington. I actually went to both truck races at Darlington in 2010 and 2011 as well. Todd Bodine and Casey Kane won those races. There will not be any fans in the stands for Xfinity or Trucks this weekend, only for the Cup Series, but I'm going to have more than likely pre- and post-race vlogs for the Cup Race and the Xfinity Race. Once again, maybe not the Truck Race because uh, we're still having some satellite issues here. I can't pick up FS1. And probably by the time the race ends, we'll be getting ready to head out on the road to get to the racetrack and... Get ourselves prepared for the cup race on Sunday night. So yeah, that'll pretty much do it for today's vlog. I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to talk about tomorrow. I'll figure out something. But uh, I just need you guys to stay safe out there. Be careful whatever you do. Wear your masks. And just keep your head in the game. This is NASCAR Fan 97 saying see you tomorrow.